This is the 16th edition. Stefan Swanepoel and his team at T360 put this together every single year. It is the most extensive trends report in the industry where they really get us ready for what's going to happen in 2021. These aren't predictions. This is data, statistics, information of what is happening and where our industry is heading. Mm -hmm. uh, it is by far the most, again, comprehensive report. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 155 of The Real Word. Word is up. All right, we're going to do it. We're getting into Finally. the Swanepoel Trends Report, 16th edition, 2021. This, but but could, what? Oh, sorry, I keep going. I was just going to say this uh, podcast is not sponsored oh. by T360 <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, we're, we've just chosen to <clears throat> kind of break it down. There are nine overall trends. This is part one. I was going to say. Is that where you were going? I was. Like, I feel like we've been dragging out this whole, like, next week, next week, next week. And now we're doing it, but now we're only doing half. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's nine trends. We want to kind of. <clears throat> give them all their glory. Yeah, give a good takeaway <clears throat> for each trend. So we're going to do four trends today, part one on this podcast. Next podcast will be part two. Where we'll go. He started at number nine, worked his way down to one. Well, I mean, <clears throat> makes so that's, sense, right? That's where we're going to start. We're going to go nine through six. Next week will be five through one. So a little bit different episode, just like last episode. Last of different. them have been a little different. Yeah. We're working through. We're, we're taking the cobwebs out, getting back into it, yeah, feeling get, our way. So usually we got the two. If you're, if you're new to the show, we usually do two rackets, two topics. We call them rackets. Say if they're a racket or not. Uh, two real estate news topics. Nicole hates that word. Why do you? What do you have against news? I just I'm not a new I'm not a news lover. I'm not a lo I'm not a lover of news. Uh, but it's like but I and things I that are happening. And I certainly don't want to be like thought of as providing news. I do. So think of me as providing news. <laughs> think of Nicole as providing. The I feel color. like it's we just we argued about it because you wanted this show to be called. Like real, real estate news, news. real or re, yeah, real estate news. You did. Simple. So you and got I, it. And I was like, I am not. I yeah. news and politics are two things that I. No, not politics, just news. No, but, no, no. I'm just saying, but those are two things that I refuse to touch. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not touching. Now any everyone. Of those. Now everyone has to guess what the real word means. You know, real real estate news. They wouldn't have had to guess. They would have just known. No, but it's the real word. It's like the real estate real word. Like yeah. here's the word on the street. On you know? the streets. Yeah. It's that's not news. That's not news. That's no, just, that's, that's news. the right. streets. Go back and check out last episode. We it was a special episode. We broke down all of Brad Inman's twenty one predictions for two thousand twenty one. I think a couple episodes before that, we recapped his two thousand twenty predictions, which were right, which were wrong. Mm -hmm. But last episode, we we reviewed and reacted to mm -hmm. his twenty one twenty one uh, predictions. I love that episode. Go back and check that out. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're extending it two more weeks. Two more weeks on the extension. Extending what? Oh, if you like are, the whole, like, if yeah. you're on the one and company If page. you're on the one and company, our real so estate sorry, team here in Connecticut, uh, if you're on the YouTube channel for watching The Real Word there, two more weeks, they'll be posted there. And then no more. We're only going to be Ooh, on The Real Word You know what we Word should do? Channel. We should have like a ticker yeah, on the bottom on the bottom of our on the bottom of this on the bottom here let's note that ticker make sure you go over start at the 40 in the notes well two weeks is that's a lot but of do minutes. it now go over to the real word channel this video is on the real word as well as the last 154 episodes so go over there subscribe there hit the notification bell give this video a thumbs up do all of that thank you very much all right let's get into the first four trends part one of the t360 2021 trend report okay trend number nine what if people don't know what this is okay i'll, I'll let you know what just it is. real quick yeah this is the 16th edition stefan swanepoel and his team at t360 put this together every single year it is the most extensive trends report in the industry where they really get us ready for what's going to happen in 2021 these aren't predictions this is data, statistics, information of what is happening and where our industry is heading. Mm -hmm. uh, it is by far the most, again, comprehensive report. 
the it's forward was written by Robert Revkin. It. Yep. It's $200, uh, 199 something like that. $299, but it's, that's $200. And uh, it's over 200 pages. There's just tons and tons of information. They do a bunch of other reports. Uh, they they also consult some of the top brokerages in our nation, and I, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, you're passionate right. about this. I am. Each year. All right, number nine on the nine trends that they've outlined here for mm -hmm. us is the housing affordability reality. Mm -hmm. Median prices. This is my big takeaway here. Median prices for homes hit an all-time high in August 2020 at $310,600, okay? Mm -hmm. So we've seen an upwards in that, that graph in here you gotta, shows. You, you're, we're gonna post the graph? Uh, I don't you know like if we can because it's not digital. I'd love to post a graph. We'll How take would a we picture do? We'll of take it. a picture and we'll take post it. Take a picture it. of it. We will definitely do that. Uh, I mean, it is 2021. We have we median have the ability. Existing home prices from 99. You see, from 99, it goes up to 2005 to 2007, comes back down, and then since 2011, here we are in 2021. The last 10 years, median existing home prices have been up on this upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Now, who are the they get into if you're going to buy this, and again, we're not sponsored. We're not making money off this. We'll link it up so you can buy it, but we don't get a dime if you do choose to buy it. Um, if you, you know you do go through it, there's a whole bunch of information on people's income, how the uh, interest rates are affecting the affordability. Obviously, we're seeing an all-time high in 2020, but we're also at an all-time low for interest rates. The Housing Opportunity Index, the... <laughs> Inventory, inventory that plays into it, mm -hmm. uh, labor shortages, land costs. There's a whole bunch mm -hmm. of information that they get into, even the diversity around home ownership. Now, my big takeaway number two was those most affected. Mm -hmm. First time and lower income buyers. Are we seeing that here, like in our local market? And in, in the comments, if you're seeing that in your local market, are first time home buyers and lower income buyers the most affected by this uh, rise in median prices. I, 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 I feel like it, I feel like it's a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about first time home buyers. I think because there are so many products out there. Um, you know, they're like down in payments. In terms of mortgage products? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. And down payments are so low. So you don't actually really need to have a lot of cash. Um, but obviously in terms of affordability like not just can you afford the house can you afford you know everything that comes along with it obviously you are losing you are losing some but i do think that a lot of first-time home buyers are sort of sitting on the sidelines for so long and i do think that the interest rates have brought them back They've in saved. 2020 we saw people save more money than ever before obviously 25 percent of the money in the yeah. whole entire world was well, created and a lot of, in 2020. And a lot of renters have moved back home with their parents. I mean, even yeah. like, you know, even adults that were renting, you know, move back home, take care of their families, or if they needed to quarantine in place with their families. Um, I mean, obviously the lower income buyers are always going to be affected when prices go up. For sure. Um, so that sort of goes without saying. But I do think that the first time home buyer did have some incentives, though, where, you um, as long as, again, I think where they probably got hurt the most was that sellers were maybe a little bit more skeptical to take on buyers that were putting lower down payments. Because then obviously if things weren't appraising, then you have to go back and renegotiate. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, they're definitely at a disadvantage, I will say. This is interesting too. And, and they didn't get into the fact that, um, and I listen, I haven't gone full Tilt, in on yeah. everything here so i might have missed it in their defense but they didn't get into i don't believe the fact that 25 percent of the money in the world was created in the year 2020. there's a lot more money out there through all these stimulus the money mm -hmm. printing that's going mm -hmm. on 25 percent of the world's money was created in 2020. chew on that one but here's another um piece of information that that's impacting our inventory quite a bit According to a recent analysis by the New York Times, institutional investors have snapped up at least 60 billion of single family property inventory since the end of the Great Recession. So you've got uh, these institutional investors sitting on single family homes. A lot of those have not yet hit the market. Hmm. It's very interesting. Very. All right. The outlook, though, overall on trend number nine, the housing affordability reality is that the solution for these 
low income buyers, these first time home buyers is unclear. Right. Cost of construction is very high. The mm -hmm. inventory is obviously going to be an issue again in 2021. And when people do build, I mean, we see it in our market. When you do build, it is not targeting the first time home buyer or the low income buyer. Never, at all. never. Come on. So what are going to be the solutions there? It's all I don't about think anybody, maximizing the, the, the profit there. Yeah. I don't think anybody has an answer for that. And wages you know, are certainly not uh, going well, up at the same rate that some of the cost of materials and all this other stuff. Right. Well, out. and I think that beyond the cost of material, though, too, to build in 2020 took so much longer. So just like your mm. carrying costs were so much bigger and your delays and oh. there were so many additional expenses that inevitably are going to be thrown onto onto a buyer, which is going to make it very difficult to make it affordable when things are taking so much longer, let alone being able to get things. I mean, think about yeah. how many people that, you know, developers that we worked with that people were moving in and they didn't even have appliances. I certainly don't blame builders and developers no, for not, not creating a product for the low income buyer or the first time home buyer, because it's Just virtually hard. impossible for yes, them to do that. Absolutely. With the cost of development. All right. Trend number eight, they go inside the clear cooperation policy. The clear cooperation policy is obviously the rules, uh, MLS and basically NAR. Uh, you know, if you're a member of the MLS or NAR, you must follow these rules. Right. Now, that rule came out. We talked about it on previous Real Words. Yeah, we even had. Um Oh yeah, we had uh, the CEO of, of the Smart MLS here in Connecticut on, Chat Kathy Elson, yep. mm -hmm. and we chatted all about that. And it, it was a big topic. Inman covered it, you know, for I feel like months, like a couple of months. Was that the end of nineteen? end of 2019 where it was really in the news or beginning of 20? No, I think it was the end of 19. Well, right, but I think that there was some discrepancy though too because we felt like it was a new policy, but but our MLS had always yeah. been using the policy, so. I think it went into effect at the end of 19, really for 2020. I feel like it all, it's all it's all a blur's day. It is all a blur I, we, after, my after a COVID year. husband and I at this year. point, we call it blur's day. Every yeah. day is blur's day. <laughs> now, COVID really didn't impact the rolling out of the clear cooperation policy. In fact, and here was the big takeaway, 86.3% right of May, organ... Right here on May 1st, 2020 oh, okay. was so the it was deadline a bit later. of when it, when it got implemented. In yeah. Implemented to all these uh, trade organizations and um, MLS organizations, really. It went into effect really. January 1. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So For, it was just so, this year. This is our first year of it. Now, uh, members of these organizations, the MLS organizations, 86.3% of them said that COVID-19 did not impact the rollout of the clear cooperation policy in any way. Mm -hmm. What is interesting is we got into a, a year with really low inventory. And this goes right up against, like when you get into low inventory years, pocket listings become very attractive to agents and, well and, and i would i would argue not to sellers but some sellers want that well but a lot of sellers do they're like well like can do, do you think anybody's interested like can you get interest can you throw it out there can you let people know that i'm you know wanting to sell or maybe thinking about selling i, mean, I had it's i had a call just this week from i'm not gonna give any names and it's somebody that was out of state anyway so it's not even a local situation somebody out of state calls me and says hey i need some advice uh my agent before I even listed the home, brought over a buyer and they made me basically a full price offer. And, you know, I want to know if I should take it. It seems like the market's really good. I said, well, did, did your agent, you know, like give you the scenario of what it looks like going on the market? Like how many other homes are getting multiple offers? Right. And this person was like, no, I just kind of like, said, hey, somebody wants to see it. They've been looking. They're in the neighborhood and they want to buy it. Was so it I their said, own buyer too? It wasn't. Okay. So that was interesting. Okay. It wasn't even part of their team or it wasn't even inside their own brokerage. Was there a listing signed? There was. Okay. So, and I said, well, technically, depending on, I don't have the contract in front of me, but this technically does go against the clear cooperation policy. Right. If you're showing it to one, one agent, you have to show it to all. And I said, number two, without really knowing your park market, just based off of what I do know about your market and your price point, if I was a seller in today's market, I would be listing it to everyone, allowing that clear cooperation. One, I mean, it's the law. It's the law. Mm -hmm. Um, Unless two, the seller said that they didn't want an MLS. I mean, right. that's a completely different situation. But this one, 
like most sellers didn't even know I just signed my listing. I'm ready to go. Like didn't right. know right. what was going on. Yeah. Um, and I want there to be a competitive environment. There's such a, a high likelihood right now with the lack of inventory well, and the price they point that this person was at. Co- unless they didn't want a competitive market. Maybe they didn't want anyone going through their home because it was COVID. Right. And they but didn't that have... was not the case right. with this scenario. Yeah. This, this person wanted the most yep. money they could get. Well, it sounded like they knew the answer And then. I said, well, one person Why has seen the property. You? Exactly. So, so <laughs> uh, you know, in that case. Yeah. Uh, this policy applies to over 540 MLSs, which represent over 96% of the nation's MLS. So there's a 96% chance that your agent or you, if you're listening to this as an agent or a broker, should be following the clear cooperation policy at this point, and and it should be kind of like embedded into your practice. Mm -hmm. Are you still seeing a lot of coming soon, pocket listings? Of course. (laughs) I mean, oh, and I, and I, I, it, and it's so funny though, because I, I feel like pocket listing is misused and misunderstood, and okay. agents throw How around so? like they don't. Well, I don't know. But anyway, in terms of coming soons, yes. I mean, you, how many times do you go on your Instagram story and there's a, a, a coming soon or like feet at a front door or the photographer's taking the photo? Um, there's a little bit of a gray area with that. that there kind is of stuff. very gray area because I, I do know that there are a few agents that do it, and then if you ask them the address, they don't disclose it because right. at, at that point they can't, or they don't really give you any information, or they tell you when it's coming on, which again is all of the right moves. Um, but again, there is a huge gray area with like taking the photo, saying coming soon. But are they on the coming soon program? Because we have a coming. I soon think program if you're taking an, an Instagram story and I'm here at a property gathering photos is it of you or is it of my, the house of like me you? or yeah. the house in the background or mm-hmm. like you know a lot of people do the photographer set up on the tripod uh, tripod rather and you're behind the photographer yeah. from the backside. you know i think there's some of that you're not disclosing the address you're not setting up showings i mean the big the big rule breaker is allowing people to do showings before you, you're you know letting the entire association the mls um members get I, access but to again that my only point here is though is that to save yourself just put it on the coming soon i mean there's now right. a coming soon tab then everybody has access to the coming soon and during that time yeah i mean you you i feel like then you can and, do that photo and they know what it is what the address is and the date that they're able to then see the property and you can do a coming soon within your own brokerage right. if the client signs off on that. Right. So if you that's have, your safest way. I mean, if you're gonna if you want to do selfies in a house during photos, like put it on the coming soon program. Right. I mean, that's gonna just that's the best way to but do it. But you can also um, before the coming soon part portion, you can also if your client signs off on it, share that with just inside your brokerage. So if you have number one market share. Mm-hmm in your state your brokerage does that could be an advantage if that that seller wants to like do a tiered testing of their property yeah it's not for everybody it's not for every price i still think though regardless your sellers are 100 percent in this market gonna want to have it hit the market oh in this market for sure i mean if anything you're just sort of causing a little bit of a frenzy there were a few properties that i was able you know, that I saw on coming soon. So I was at least able to let my buyers know like, hey, in like a couple of weeks, like this house is coming on. Like I've been in touch with the agent. Like mm-hmm. we're, we, I, I've scheduled us to see the day that it's on and it's worked out. I mean, I do think the coming soon product is like fabulous because you could actually then sell it day one, right. you know? Um, the coming soon MLS product, the legal coming yes. soon. Right? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yes. Uh, there's also, they break down, there's three significant, lawsuits uh that have to do with the clear cooperation policy those are in there if you don't understand the policy at this point uh this report does a great job breaking it down all right trend number seven the brokerage ancillary business playbook okay so they break it down to four quadrants it's really not anything new right but the real for a real estate company the four quadrants would be brokerage sales Mm -hmm. right mortgage Mm -hmm. title escrow Mm -hmm. And what they're calling warranty insurance all grouped into that to that fourth quadrant, yeah. right? So insurance, I think where, and they did not mention it, and where most people are not talking about uh, a fifth quadrant, I'll say, is the marketing, branding, services 
that agents are buying in a number of different places right now or trying well to figure that's out how to probably why own. they can't track it because these are these are things that brokerages are owning yeah. you know have ownership in but if you're going online and you know paying twenty dollars to be part of something that's going to automate your your social it's hard to really like it's hard to track that in the brokerages in the real estate the brokerages sector. haven't done a great job of tapping in to that ancillary business they have done a good job on the mortgage side, they have done a good job on well, they've title had time, escrow they've had insurance. Time. And it's, in, in all honesty, though, to figure out mortgage, in my mind, is probably a little bit simpler. Yeah. Because, you know, right now in this market, you're competing against places that are charging $20 a month, mm -hmm. you know, and then others that are charging upwards of what? 15 20 who the, depending on what you want. So I bet it's really hard for them to sort of put like a little finger on it. And then get the agents to actually buy in. I mean, not many agents. I mean, obviously they're paying for photos, but think about how long it took for agents to really sort of 100% dive into paying for photos, let alone paying for somebody to post on their Instagram it, or Facebook or if you can video create products, or podcasts. I mean, how many agents are doing podcasts? They don't because they don't want to spend the money on it. But if you can create products as a brokerage that help your agents do that, 100%. And our brokerage here in Connecticut is actually doing that. They're rolling it out this year. Ravis Premium Services. William Ravis, one of the largest brokerages in the Northeast and mm -hmm. um, in South Florida, they're doing that so that their agents can stream like, like their ramp product. I don't know if you've looked at this at all. Agents can go and just click what they need in terms of photos, like the basic stuff. And that's one of the products within the premium services. I think more brokerages are trying to look into how to figure there, this out and there, should. It will, try to figure I'm that sure. Out. Yeah. I, again, I don't. I. I I know we're talking about trends, but I still think that they're trying to, like you said, figure it out. So maybe yeah. we'll see it as a trend for 2022. But there's really no real Ooh, money like data either. There. I yeah. mean, you know, you're talking about huge numbers here. I mean, I think most brokerages are probably making 75% of their money just off of the mortgage end. So, you know, it, it's, it's, but I do think that you'll probably see it as a trend in 2022. Yeah. And, and percent of home buyers who contacted the service provider first, 52% contacted the real estate agent first 18% yeah. well, they're mortgage talking about lender the consumer side yeah. so this all makes sense like one-stop shopping yep. so obviously the the social for us is not for the consumer that's for the agent so 18% contacted the mortgage lender first 16% contacted the home builder 10% other uh, considered the service provider their primary point of contact 40% considered their real estate agent their primary point of contact the largest of the group but I think there's a lot of room for agents to grow there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, agents should be seen as the primary point of contact. It, it should. I, I guess it really just depends on how if they're strong they're, enough. I mean, unless the mortgage person is introducing you to the agent, you know, they're, they're, they may have yep. a sense of the mortgage. 18% and same number as contacting the mortgage Makes sense. first. 18% considered their mortgage person the primary. 22% mm -hmm. uh, builder. 16% had other. Uh, home buyer likelihood to use agents, brokerage, affiliated services, lender in 2010, 26%, 2019, it was up to 40%. Mm -hmm. Closing services, 2010, 36%, 2019, 52%. Home warranty, 31% in 2010, 57% in wow. 2019. Are we seeing a trend here? Yep. Home inspector, 37% in 2010, 56 in 2019 and these are broker affiliated so these there's are broker home affiliated. inspectors that are broker affiliated yeah we Ooh, don't see that here in connecticut but, that scares me a little. um yeah uh homeowners insurance 15 percent only in 2010 36 percent in 2019 so brokerages while zillow's done a great job of really getting these last 10 years the front end of the transaction mm -hmm. the leads brokerages have done a really good job over the last decade capturing those ancillary products according to this data well and i bet you nine times out of ten it's because they now offer those products yeah you know i can't imagine 10 years ago they all offer they more were, people probably right. offer that's a good point yeah. that, that's a good point all right trend number six the real estate franchising landscape big takeaway here we had third we have 30 brands that are franchisees mm -hmm. in the nation uh, franchising started really in the 1970s. They go through each uh, individual one. I mean, yeah. they break it apart. They show you exactly what their fees are. What Every their marketing single one. They're, fee they're, is. They're, yeah. I mean, here's the they're, it's it's outlook here. You, yeah. If you're thinking about opening a franchise, you want to buy this report for 200 bucks because it goes through all 30 
And to Nicole's point, we'll lay out everything you need to know mm-hmm. uh, on the basics offices, yeah. on each model. How many years you have. Here's what, what really struck me. 20 of the largest franchisees in uh, our franchise brands, rather, in our nation uh, accounted for $1.4 trillion of the volume in 2019. That's 44% of the volume. So franchises still have a huge chunk of the pie of the real estate transaction pie. Uh, obviously, you know, some of the big brands like Coldwell Banker, which has corporate right. and franchise yep. models. Uh, we'll, we'll go Remax. through We'll go through the whole list. You want to yeah. go through all 30? Let's do it. Assist to sell at properties. Not familiar with them, but they look I'm like Chicago. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway obviously has uh, both corporate and Franchises, uh, Better Homes and Gardens, Century 21, CB, Corcoran, uh, Cry Leak Realtors, that's Tennessee, hmm. uh, Engel and Volkers, you see that in some of these high-end markets, ERA, Exit, uh, FC Tucker, that's an Indianapolis company, I'm not familiar mm-hmm. with them, Harcourts, HomeSmart, Howard Hanna, which obviously is a beast, top 10 mm-hmm. brokerage in the nation, Intero, Iowa Realty, uh, John L. Scott, KW, Nest Realty, Next Home, Real Living, Realty Executives, One Realty Group, Realty World, Remax, Sotheby's, United Real Estate, Weikert, and Windermere. We did a, um, we referenced the Windermere study at the end of 2020 on one mm-hmm. of the real words, one of the economists from Windermere. So those are the 30, uh, and they break down all all when the company was founded when uh, the franchising began the number of franchisees the number Mm -hmm. of franchised offices and the number of agents Mm -hmm. uh, the term so what you would be how long whether it's 10 years five years that that seems to be the common common. term uh, the minimum upfront fees and ongoing franchise fees the marketing fee and other fees so if you're thinking about franchising this report alone just section number six the franchise trend is valuable information Super to dig valuable. into. So, all right, we've got five. Do you want to tease what the other five trends are? Oh, do you know what they are? Oh, they're right. Have in you the looked book. into them yet? I have looked into them. Okay. I already started taking notes on them, but uh, we're not going to tease them. You got to come back for those. All right. I will. What I will say is, two of the five uh, trends have to do with some of the big names, EXP, and one of them's Realty. All right. So. We've got five I don't know. trends. Is that, is that a tease? Is that going to make everyone want to come back? Uh, if you're with EXP or Realogy, <laughs> which a lot of people are, obviously, then then maybe you do want to come back. Hope you do want to come back. If you want to order a copy of this for yourself, again, we're not getting a dime. Maybe uh, maybe they'll throw us something. Who knows? You think? No, I don't think maybe so. Maybe at least I'll just get my own copy. <laughs> maybe, maybe Nicole, <laughs> so she doesn't share with me, uh, can get a copy. But We'll link that up if you, if you want to check it out. Again, it's the most comprehensive trends report every single year. This is the 16th edition, T360. This is all they do is study the real estate market. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a great report, so I encourage you guys, if you care about your industry, to go ahead and dig into that. We're going to give our takeaways of the final five trends in part two on the next Real Word. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll record that like this week and get it. Well, maybe not because I... Uh, we'll, we'll see when that comes out. It may come out next week as wow. usual. Or I feel a like I'm always on my toes. Or is it today? Is it you tomorrow? Don't, I'll let you is know it, about 10 Nicole, minutes Nicole, can before. you come in in five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and definitely if you didn't check out uh, Brad's 21, 2021 predictions, go back to episode 154. Check that out. Make sure you go over to the Real Word channel on YouTube and hit the subscribe button over there because after, and I promise you we're extending it two weeks, but after next week's show. The ticker's back up. We are not going to be posting the real word on the One and Company YouTube. So if you've been watching it there, you've got to get over and subscribe to the Real Word channel. Perfect. All right. That's it, I guess. That's it. Anything from anything else from you? Feel good about it. You feeling good? I always feel good. All right, good. Keep it real. We'll see you here next week on part two of the Swanapool Trends Report Real Word Edition. See you guys.